Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to ask this fun question. Will Linux Mint get Chromium on the next release? This is a this is that one key fundamental point in the Linux Mint 20 release that was probably the most controversial. Now, I don't mind the way that they did things because Again, going back to the Snap packages, they're a company that fundamentally disagrees with Snap. That's why they don't have an easy toggle button that some people suggested. When it's fundamentally against what their company philosophy is, it's understandable they take it out. But they also gave us easy ways to put Snap back in. But the controversy that got around and really the only application that was really caught up in the mix of all this is Chromium, which they also gave us easy and clear instructions for how to install Chromium, either a daily build or the Debian version or a series of other things. Now, I did a video when Linux Mint 20 first came out where I said that, hey, this is a, this is a distribution that actually listens to its users. And in that light, the monthly report comes out and um, they actually have in here some interesting statements that suggests the next version of Linux Mint could actually package Chromium in it. We'll go ahead and walk through this newsletter. This is the monthly newsletter here. So um, what they, they start out, you know, thanks for the various donations. And of course, you should help support the distributions and things that you are using. So they the first couple paragraphs are where we have information then we have some data we're going to look at the data here as well linux mint 20 was well received but introduced new challenges both as a release and an upgrade we'll focus uh, we'll be focused on tackling these challenges for the next two years as well as implementing exciting refinements and new features in the upcoming point releases some of these are already listed on the Trello boards and roadmaps. I'd rather talk about them once they are implemented and ready to be shipped, though. So there's some new things coming <clears throat> that we will see. Now, hopefully this time next month, we'll be able to give you a preview of some of the new features. Now, this is the part that uh, I even said, hey, it would have been better if they would have packaged, given us some form of Chromium rather than an empty Chromium package, because there are two fundamental issues they were dealing with. The first is the Chromium issue. Because some people like, my Linux Mint web design computer, which is Linux Mint 19.3, uses, I use Chromium on that to test Chrome-based websites for clients. If I upgraded that system to 20, I would actually lose Chromium. I'd have to go back through and I'd have to put uh, the put the Debian version of Chromium on there. It would be doable, but it would be an interference. The second thing is Linux Mint has always had an issue with with um, third-party packages. Anything on there like custom repos, anything that you're you're installing onto your system that's not in the repos generally either gets uninstalled or could interfere with the upgrade process. And so that was another criticism. So they had two points of criticism. Last month's feedback, we noted some users would like Linux Mint to package Chromium. We also observed confusion and lack of empowerment when it comes to dealing with foreign packages during the upgrade. These two areas are being looked into. So ideally what they'll do is they will change that empty blank package with an actual Chromium build. Maybe that's the Debian build, maybe that's the ungoogled build, whatever build that's going to be, hopefully when Linux Mint 20.1 comes out, we actually will have a version of Chromium. That would be epic. That would actually clear up all of the craziness. I know some of you are still saying, hey, put an easy toggle button for snap packages. Again, it's against their fundamental philosophy. That's why they don't. If you do want that approach, Manjaro still does that. I think Manjaro handles snaps and flat packages the best because I don't. if I don't want to use either one of them, Manjaro has easy on off toggle buttons. I like that, but I also have to agree with the fact that their philosophy says otherwise. Okay. Now, uh, they also have uh, this one here. Linux Mint 4 received many updates, including Linux Mint, uh, L excuse me, LMDE 4 received many updates, including new features from Linux Mint 20 and Cinnamon 4.6. So a lot of those things that the new features in Linux Mint 20 were then ported over to Linux Mint Debian Edition. Now, they did this study on the popular Linux. When I first saw this, I go, okay, did they either randomly pull or are they actually harvesting data? Because that's frightening. So looking into this, what this information is, is this is just raw pings from their start pages. So when you run Linux Mint on Firefox, the default page is this one. It, although it looks exactly the same, it actually does differ 
in the the name. So this one here um, is linuxmint.com slash start slash Tina. The latest one is what, Juliana, I believe. Uh, they had a Tessa. So what they're doing is they're just measuring raw pings on the that server, nothing else. So on this, what we have here is they're showing us the popularities. So the Linux Mint 19X branch is still the majority of Linux Mints. This is honestly, I, I like this because I, even I'm not a big fan of upgrading just to the brand new versions of things right away. And I don't think we should. That is, again, one of those fundamental problems with snaps. Hey, the next version's out. Let's just push it to your system. Eh, yeah, you can hold some of those back, but that's okay. All right. Um, so what we see here, though, is the majority are running Linux Mint 19. We have a decent sliver running Linux Mint 20. We still actually have a big block running Linux Mint 18. Now, they do say here that their data is extremely... Uh, extremely biased in that some people are going to uh, some people are going to change the start page. If you boot up Firefox and you don't like landing on the Linux Mint start page and you change that, you're now out of this study. If you uh, if you uh, and I think that it's also going to be dependent on raw pings. I don't don't think they're collecting anything about IP addresses or anything here. Maybe more information about this would be good to have. But my idea is if you load up Firefox 15 times a day, that's 15 pings for your version of Linux Mint versus if you only load it up once a day, that's only a single ping towards it. More information about this study would be definitely be helpful. But uh, what they're saying here is uh, Linux Mint 17 is, uh, is a little bit of a sliver. Linux Mint Debian Edition 4 is tiny and other is tiny. Now, commenting on the Linux Mint Debian Edition 4, why is this so small? Well, the reason that is so small is because they say, hey, we don't exp explicitly push it. We don't really market it. It's just something that we use on the back end in case we have to make a single day code change, drop Ubuntu and go with it. I absolutely love what they're doing with it. All right. Now, that's just the X branches. This one actually gives us the breakdown of, of the exact point releases. And I can't remember which ones are which, but the asterisks here are the dot threes. So the 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 Sylvia I think is the I think Sylvia is is this uh 18.3 I can't remember. Uh, I think they say it tell us down here. Dot threes. I think Sylvia might be the 17, Trisha would be the uh I'm no 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 I'm sorry. Rosa is the 17, Sylvia is the 18, Trisha is the 19. So the three asterisk ones uh these guys here represent the dot three branches. So Still, the majority of all individuals are running um, Tresha, so that's uh, 18, that's 18.3, right? Um, I believe that's 18.3. And then we actually have Yuliana. This is the 20 branch. So that's actually the, the second largest is 20.0. Uh, and then third, we have Tessa. Fourth, we have the Silvana. And then where's Rosetta? That one's down here at the bottom. All right, so Linux Mint 17X, despite reaching end of life, still represents 6%, they said. Linux Mint Debian Edition represents a single uh, 1%. So uh, if we look up the top 15 releases, we notice that the last point releases, dot three, marked with star on the chart, are the most popular in their respective series. This is great because the features aside, point three releases represent the most mature versions. So that's good. Now they have a section over here on the... Uh, on Linux Mint Debian Edition as well. This is worth reading as well because it, it really talks about what Linux Mint Debian Edition is there for. It's small and not particularly relevant. It doesn't get point releases. It's not promoted or given the same exposure. And its purpose is not to, complete with, to compete with Linux Mint or to attract new users. It is developed as their plan B in case we need to switch package bases in one day. It can be seen as a costly investment, but it's strategically important to our project. This is why I like Linux Mint. They are thinking outside the box. They are not walking themselves blindly down the path, whichever path Ubuntu leads them on. They have an exit path any time they want. This is why I love the Linux Mint team. It tells us exactly how much we rely on Ubuntu, well, uh, how well we can do it without it, and 
how much work would be involved if we had to stop using it. It also helps us with our development when tracking new issues in our tools and projects. And even though we do get a lot of feedback downstream from Arch and Fedora, it would be nice to be able to easily compare between Ubuntu and Debian package bases and identify what is specific to Linux Mint and what is not. Real number of Linux Mint Debian users is likely higher than 1%. Uh, the lack of point releases, the lack of exposure to temporary users, the upgrade process, and the fact that Linux Mint Debian Edition users are usually more experienced could lead to a higher ratio of users modifying their start page than in the regular Linux Mint. But again, that is not very relevant as long as Linux Mint Debian Edition does not cost too much, is of high quality, and we learn from the, the terms of strategy and development it is a successful project. Popularity of the older series indicates a cons uh, conservative part of the user base, which might be more interested in the maturity of the distribution and lack of bugs than the introduction of new features. In other words, this is why I stay on 18.3 on this system, why I'm staying on 19.3 on my web design system, is because of the maturity. I don't have any problems. I don't have any issues. There are a few packages I would like to see newer versions in the repos. I can handle all of those with custom repositories or dev packages. And that's what I do. That's why I'm very happy using my Linux Mint Debian Edition, excuse me, my Linux Mint 18.3 system for all this video design work here because it's rock solid, stable, it has everything that I need, and I don't have any problems with it. Um, occasionally, Audacity screws things up every time I push an update because Audacity is crazy. But I always do get it to work. Anyway, one thing appears clearly. I think we underestimate how many people use the point three release. We can do better and consider this a little bit more when it comes to backporting fixes and solutions as we develop new releases. Focusing on the same package as opposed to six months prior to Linux Mint 17 for a whole two years is a great decision keeping an eye on the last one and continuing to improve it as well as we move forward with the new one might be something we need to do a little bit more. So ultimate message here, they are listening to the feedback. They are going to be looking at the update pack strategies with foreign packages and of key purpose. If they just package Chromium, that would just solve a lot of the issues and a lot of the problems that people are talking about. But there is the Linux Mint news as of as it was published yesterday. So thanks for coming along, guys. Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.